everyone welcome today I'm going to show you how I created or partially how I created this um, three-dimensional piece with the items that I have purchased or received from Scrappy Shack as a design team member I'm so proud to be working for this company let's go ahead and get started So I had already started this. I wasn't even sure if I was going to make a video, but what I'm doing here is I'm using the crit, grit paste in Crypt from Tim Holtz Distress Line. And I'm using multiple tools, just whatever I can get my hands on. And I have one that I kind of stamped out and messed up on while I painted, but it, it's a good reference because when you're building this stuff up, you stop kind of seeing the lines underneath as you build the dimension. But I'm gonna show you just a few, you know, just little bits and pieces of how I do this. So I take my grit paste and I put a little bit on my little mat um, because I don't wanna leave the jar open. I don't want it to all dry out on me. And I'll take whatever tool I can grab and I've got a couple of, you know, cheap dollar store paint brushes that I like to use to grab and kind of pat down. So I just lay a little bit down and then I start patting it into the shape that I need. And I'm just going roughly at first and you can refine later. So I grab a little bit of water and I've got a skinnier brush here and just a little bit of water. Like I tap it in the water and then I tap it off on my mat. Um, but that really does kind of help smooth it out. And you'll see that it all kind of blends in together. And this is how I clean my brush. Yep, that's another technical tool that I own. <laughs> yeah, I love my finger tools. So I'm going to try and grab it. I just, like I said, I use multiple tools. I'm going to see if I have any better luck grabbing it off of that silicone mat with the silicone brush. Nah, not really. <laughs> Go back to patting it down roughly and then take my skinnier brush and start to refine it. So you see I've dipped in water and then I've dipped most of the water off. And then clean my brush with my fingertips. Hey, you can use, you know, normal people tools, but this is me. <laughs> my fingers. Yeah. So you see I'm just kind of patting back and forth and it stays wet long enough to kind of sculpt it. And you, if you take the brush and go lightly over it, it'll smooth. But you do have to clean your brush time to time. And if there's some parts you don't like and it's too much, you can take your little knife and just kind of chop it away and then smooth it out again. So here I'm making the uh, little leaves more dimensional. I already had one layer on there, but I need them bigger, taller. <laughs> I am working on watercolor paper. Um... And the stamp that I'm using is from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Uh, it's called Gothic Tapestry. And so I stamped that down in just some archival ink, black archival ink, and um, let it dry. And then on my first coat, like I said, I did a light coat and started building the larger elements, the big, the big leaf and the big flower, because those are gonna be the tallest elements on the piece. So here's just another demonstration of kind of creating a leaf with its little um, dimension in it. And uh, right there, see, I want that big leaf. I want it to be extended all the way. So, you know, I am using some artistic license here because that's not how the artist created it. But some of the detail is just very difficult to recreate without spending, you know, days and weeks. And the, these this video, is done over a course of a few days because you have to let the layers dry in between. <laughs> so I just kind of move this around and shape it until it becomes kind of organically part of that other stem using a little bit of water to smooth out and move around and just kind of make that all one cohesive piece. And it's going to, of course, look weird. And if you get too much, scrape some off. This, you know, my motto is if you don't like something, change it. And I do that a lot on <laughs> this one. <laughs> 
you know, this is an experiment. I had done one before. I had done it with the regular texture paste, and then I put the, um, I put the, uh, what's that glossy stuff? <laughs> Come on, brain. I tell you what. Uh, distress embossing glaze in different colors on the flower and stuff. So you can do this with just about any kind of molding medium. There's a nice shot of my gray hair. <laughs> well, you know. there's I get plenty of hair in my projects, too. I used to crochet a lot. and I, So much of my hair was crocheted into my works. I always told my kids, you know, there's a huge part of me <laughs> in this piece that I made you so there I am kind of smoothing up the side a little bit and then making my little kind of marks leaf print you know so it's dimensional all right so we'll work on we're going to work on this flower and see I'm looking at the picture for reference because I can't see it at all on the page anymore, especially after I put this big old glob. So I just plop a glob on there and I start looking at the reference and I decide to use this little stylus tool that I bought from Sizzix and Tim Holtz. It's for those, um, for shaping flowers, but um, it works great to make dips and things too. <laughs> you, you know, you don't have to buy a bunch of technical tools you can just find what you have, use it. And see, I'm trying to get some good dimension in this flower. And I, I you know, anybody can do this. You can do this. I know you can do it. Um, but do you want to? You know, that's that's the point. There's a lot of work that's go, going into this. So, um, you know, I just mainly just wanted to show you how I did it. And I, I did it strictly for fun and oh by the way it's my design team project for scrappy shack and i know i mentioned that in the beginning of the video um i was super honored to be invited to be on scrappy shack's design team uh the owner melanie is just an awesome awesome person and uh, my teammates are wonderful people there's just four of us it's a brand new design team and it's it's terrific it's it's great i love that i get to work with tim holtz products because they're my favorite <laughs> and so yeah i was super thrilled so here i am just kind of working on shaping this flower a little bit more and just take your time be easy on yourself go leaves are super easy <laughs> do leaves all over everything that, that'll work you can do vines you can shape your leaves like into ivy or whatever so my idea behind this is that this is made of um this is like a tombstone sort of thing that's made of um concrete and it's old and someone you know had actually sculpted the concrete like you see so here's me just refining this center checking my picture for reference again yeah i'm sorry somebody decided today that it was a good day to do landscaping but a hey, you know I would be cool with it if, like, there was just one day a week, oh, probably preferably on Sundays, even though I work Sundays, that nobody was allowed to use noisy machines. <laughs> All right, so that's dry now, and you see how much darker it gets. And I'm going to build up the dimension now on the taller parts. Let me zoom in for you a little bit. And we'll do, we'll work on this, this taller leaf here. And again, I'm going to just get out some of my grit paste and I'm just going to put it directly down because I know I'm just working in that area and it's going to take me a while to sculpt that. Um, you know, I might need more, but the first thing I do is I spread it out to kind of in, into the shape that it needs to be. Pat it down on the side so that it goes. This stuff will move with your brush. It's it's 
great stuff. Really wonderful to work with. See, I'm just kind of looking at how I can shape this and make it dimensional so it looks like it's curved, like not not like curved in a curve, but like how a leaf rolls, like it's rolled. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm using my stamp here now for reference because, um, I don't know, it was right handy. <laughs> Will you see up in that little corner, that little flourish piece? I had a heck of a time recreating that because I'm like, well, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what something is, it's very difficult to mimic it if you can't imagine it in your head. I don't know. It, that's the way it works for me anyway. So I'm just getting the lines in there and getting the curves. And now I'm just going to refine it. This is a um, very interesting stamp, and it was, of course, I had I got to choose which one that I would use for my project, and I picked this one, and um, I love them all, though. I have more on the way. <laughs> I love that Scarecrow one. Uh, that is so cool. So, yeah, this is from the Halloween 2022 release from Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. So now we're just working on refining that leaf a little more. And I turn my, I turn my work um, rather than try and reach in a strange direction. Now, if you're working on a huge project, that's not always easy. <laughs> and again, lots of artistic license here because there's certain line work that is so delicate and fine that you really can't, at least not with this particular medium, you really can't get that detail in there. You can get close, but you can't 100% get it. So here's where I'm talking about. I'm trying to make this part look more like it's a folded leaf. So I have to kind of think about the shape of it. And of course, I'll be using paint and uh, distressed crayons to enhance and you know like bring in shadows where they need to be and bring in light where it needs to be because this is you know relatively flat just like this so I'm going to do those other pieces now this is all done and it's dry so now I just need to fill in the rest but you can see the detailed work as it dries it gets very very dark Here's some pictures, still pictures of when it was wet. You can see some pieces partially drying. And some, some of the more detailed, tinier flowers and things. So you can see the detail a lot while it's wet. But um, as it dries, it's very it's much harder to see it. And you have to be careful that you don't smash your work. So, you know, I recommend working in one area and then letting it dry before you move on to the next area. All right, so now I want to go ahead. I'll go ahead and fill these in. I just wanted to show you those still pictures, kind of, since this is a process video. And I am just going to basically lightly go over basically the whole thing. Um, I'm kind of trying to avoid the eye sockets at this point, but I'll go around everything else. And I, I think, and I can't remember because that was a couple days ago, and you know how it is when you get old. Um, I think that I end up smoothing most of this out with my finger. Yep, yeah, okay, I'm going to take my brush. So see, you if you take a wet brush... This stuff will smooth very nicely. Looking for another tool. What's this? Oh, my fine brush. I want to make sure that I don't get taller than the um, than my top parts. Or, you know, I want the, the depth a little less. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Words. Words are hard. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go over basically the whole skeleton with a sort of an even coat and just make sure that I delineate with my small brush because it'll make that line for me. Um, it'll still blend in. I know it looks weird because it's wet, but when it's dry, they all blend together nicely. And see how I just push around the um, grit paste? I'm just pushing it. Just like that to try and get it even. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, again, you could do perfect if you wanted to, but that's not my wheelhouse. All right, I'm going to finish that, and there we go. So I've got that all filled in, and now I want to add a little bit of dimension there to the skull area. Um, I don't want it to, I want it to pop out a little bit more than the background. I'm going to grab some more of my grit paste and basically do the same thing that I just did, only building more dimension towards the center so that it looks 3D. I'm just getting a little water and starting to build up. So I know I need it needs to be flatter towards the back, the back of the skull, and then it can be higher towards the center of the skull. This part, I really, I struggled with it. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, you just saw me use a paper towel, not my fingers. Whoa, what about that? Well, look how dirty my fingers are. <laughs> I'm telling you, when this is in between with this drying, I'm working on another project. So um, I can't not work on things. It's just my nature. I have to, I have to do things. When I'm not doing things, I have to do other things or I'm sleeping. Uh, <laughs> I've been watching The Crown again. I watched it already once, but I'm I'm a big royal fan. Like I like period pieces and I like things about the royal family, particularly the English royal family. Um but I'll take any royal family. I just think I'm fascinated by it. Um so I've finished that off for you and I did the teeth and everything and it it looks weird now. It's got to dry. So now that it's dry, what I'm doing here is I'm taking my crayon and a fine brush and I'm just kind of darkening the areas that need to be dark. Looks like I'm out of frame there, but you see the point now that that center of that flower is dark and then I can do um, basically do the lines in the leaves and go around the outside edge and this will enhance. And uh, what I did off camera was I did... Um, the black parts in the eyes and around the mouth and nose that need to be done with my black crayon. Because I want, want those parts to stay dark. And then I also got, here we go, I'll show you just a little bit of detail of that detail work. And I'll tell you, later there's a part that I'm not super happy with so this is after doing the full thing with a black crayon and then I'm a little bit more of black crayon I don't know how this picture got in here this was hard to put together because it was so you know disjointed this one I did the picket fence to bring out the highlights and then uh, the last one I did with the forest moss to bring in the greens so that's basically my process here. I'll show you some other things that I've done. So that was a spot I really didn't like on there. So if you don't like something, change it. I put a bug. <laughs> Let's get a bug on there. That'll cover that up. And um, here is kind of the finished one. I did add some extra embellishment on there. And I ended up um, grabbing my Distress Crayons in the um, Halloween colors. I got the Iron Gate. I've got the uh, Decayed. And I've got the, from last year, Empty Tomb. And I colored the skull in all three of those basically together and painted them, you know, got them wet with a paintbrush and painted them in. I just felt like it gave it some extra color and there's some little spottiness there. Those spots are just dots of black paint. 
And then um, I'm trying to get this so you can see kind of the metallic look of the crayons. <laughs> Hang on one second. <laughs> I don't know why my watch decided it wants to ring all of a sudden. I can't even find it. There we go. It's over. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm leaving it. I have done this voiceover like three times and I'm tired. Anyway, I hope you like them. I, I think it came out pretty cool. By the way, I did the frame with just some modeling clay, some air dry modeling clay, and then covered it in grip paste because I didn't want to use up all my grip paste. If you like that video, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for stopping in. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day and a ooh, happy Halloween.